The grace and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning, everyone. I hope that you've had a, a happy Christmas. We're at Boxing Day now, as it's known, for uh, well, I've heard many different uh, reasons why it's, it's Boxing Day, but uh, some people say it's a, a day for the leftover turkey. Well, one thing we can be sure of, one thing or another, is that the message of this time of the year is never just a leftover. It's a powerful message that we need to contemplate seriously throughout the year. There's a song that says, I wish it could be Christmas every day. Well, I don't know about that, Christmas as we celebrate it, but certainly the meaning of Christmas for Christian people, God coming amongst us as a baby, and all that that means is something that we should be holding in our hearts throughout the year. And I hope that today's service, wherever you are, in the community or in the world indeed. I hope that this service today will enable us to come closer to that truth and to respond to it with thankful and committed hearts. So let's sing together, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
Friends, the Apostle John is often represented by the symbol of the eagle. The eagle was said to be the only bird that could look into the sun without being dazzled, without being blinded. And certainly John looks deeper into the being of our Lord Jesus, perhaps more than any of the other apostles. And at the very beginning of his gospel, he challenges us with these words. He says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let us pray. God, our Father, our minds cannot fathom the diminishment, the limitation, the emptying involved in your coming amongst us. Our language is not capable of expressing our wonder, but our hearts cannot contain our praise. No longer would men and women speak of a distant God, an uncaring God, an unknowable God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And with that, we saw your glory as it broke out from the birth in a place where animals fed, in the struggle with Satan, in the hand laid on the leper's skin, in the spiritual torment of Gethsemane, in the torture of Calvary. In all of that, we saw your glory, for in these moments of vulnerability, these moments of sickness, these moments of death, you were at work to bring humankind back to yourself, renewed in body, mind and spirit, to take our place with the risen Jesus in the new humanity. Father, as we remember how you came from highest bliss down to such a world as this, Give us that attitude of service that brings glory to your name. Amen. Well, let's read together in God's word, folks, as we turn to the gospel according to Luke at chapter 2 and verse 8, reading to the end of verse 20. Here, Luke is taking us from the place where Jesus was born to the hills around Bethlehem, where there were shepherds at their work, unaware of the great experience that was about to burst into their lives. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thanks be to God for his word to us, and may he give us grace to lay hold 
on his truth. We sing together now, friends, love came down at Christmas. Friends, one of the highlights of the Christmas season for many people is the watch night service on Christmas Eve. It's very atmospheric with the church in darkness and lights shining from the Christmas trees and the candles round the church. And then the bell will ring at midnight. We sing still the night and the candle at the centre of the Advent crown, the white candle representing our Lord Jesus is lit as a sign of his presence with us. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to have a watch night service this year because of the protections that have to be in place with regard to the coronavirus. But I know that many people have cherished memories of past watch night services for what they've experienced and what they've learned. Strictly speaking, though, it wasn't in the early hours of the morning that Jesus was born, but Scripture tells us it was in the evening. There is uh, an old uh, Christmas hymn which says, On Christmas night all Christians sing to hear the news the angels bring. It was on the evening of, if you like, the first Christmas day that the birth of Jesus took place and the news went abroad. The angel brought a message to shepherds who were gathered in the fields outside Bethlehem. And he was later joined by a company of angels who sang together glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to all men on whom his favours his favour rests. That was realised in the experience of these men, the shepherds who were gathered in the fields around Bethlehem. Amazing that this message was to all men. And shepherds were normally on the fringes of society in Palestine at that particular moment. But here, they were being told, perhaps the the first to hear of the news of the Saviour's birth. And it shows us just how inclusive the gospel is to all people everywhere. This message was for all the people, even these men who were in the eyes of their own society would be regarded as being insignificant in many ways. Their lives were touched by the message of the angel of the Lord and they were touched at many different levels. 
We are told that they saw the glory. The glory of God shone round about them. Now in the scriptures of the Old Testament, the glory of God is is an actual physical thing, a bright cloud that shone as a symbol of God's presence with his people. And we find the glory of the Lord appearing at significant moments in the history of Israel. It was an assurance to the people that whatever challenges they were facing in that moment, God was was with them and he was going before them. And the appropriate response in that moment was one of awe as people contemplated the, the significance of the glory of the Lord. And that was the way that the, the shepherds responded. We're told that they were, they were awe-stricken as they were enveloped by the glory of God, as they, in a sense, were wearing the, the glory of, of God in this moment. It was all around them. God was, was coming to them in that particular moment. Coming to these men in, in fulfillment of the promise of the angels that this good news was for everyone, regardless of, the, of their status. God was coming to them. We have a hymn which says that Jesus was the sharer of our flesh and our frailness. God was was reaching out in the form of someone who had very little status at that moment, a baby in a manger. And he was reaching out in this baby as far as his being could go in order to make everyone feel his love. That's the powerful message of the baby in the manger. God not holding back anything to make us feel his love. And the shepherds saw the glory of God to reassure them of this. But they also heard the good news. We've referred to to this earlier the good news which the angels brought, which was to say that God had come amongst his people in that moment. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Now it was in the mindset of the people of Israel that one day a significant person would arise out of their nation who was going to put the the nation to rights and through the nation put the whole world to rights. This person became known as the Messiah. And he would lead Israel in that moment to become the definitive superpower, the, the, the greatest influence across the world and in the history of humankind. And now the shepherds were being told that this Messiah had been born in Bethlehem. The the reference to David would take their minds back to this one who was regarded as the the greatest of of all the kings of, of Israel. And surely what had happened was that someone like David had been born that night. And when they were told that he would be their saviour. Perhaps they were thinking in purely political terms that this king would rule as other kings but bring peace and prosperity to Israel and to the rest of the world. But this is where we need to take our minds back to the dream that Joseph had before he took Mary to be his wife. When an angel appeared to Joseph in that dream 
to say that he should go ahead and take Mary to be his wife because this child had been conceived by the Holy Spirit. And the angel said to Joseph, you're to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus means saviour. And what we're hearing there, friends, is that Jesus goes so much more deeply than any other powerful person in our experience can ever go. There are some fine men and women who serve their nation in political life throughout the world. But they can only go so far in making things better. What the gospel does is to reach people in the depths with the message of Jesus who can deliver us from all the darkness that is within us and lead us forward to a better way. He, Christ, in his spirit, begins with people to make changes in society. Love came down at Christmas, says Christina Rossetti. And I love to sing that because it's when the love of Christ touches us in the depths that true transformation begins within. So the shepherds saw the glory of God. They heard the good news and they made an appropriate response. There's an urgency about the the angel's message. The angel wants the, the shepherds to go to Bethlehem and to see this thing that has happened for themselves. And it's interesting how the The angels speak of of this. They say, this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and, and lying in a manger. And maybe this wasn't quite what the the shepherds were expecting. You know, if the Messiah had come, if the great king had come at last into the midst of his people, would he be born in these circumstances? Surely something wrong here. But the angel said, this will be a sign to you. And a sign points, doesn't it? It points away from itself to something else or someone else. And this sign was pointing to God. There's an old hymn which says, who is he in yonder stall? Who is he in yonder stall? Before whom the shepherds fall. And the chorus is, Tis the Lord, O wondrous story, Tis the Lord, O King of glory. At his feet we humbly fall. Crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Who is he in yonder stall? At his feet the shepherds fall. Tis the Lord. This baby is pointing to God. What do we learn of God in his coming in this way? There's another hymn which is a more modern hymn. It says, from heaven you came, helpless babe. Entered our world, your your glory veiled. Not to be served, but to serve. And to give your life that we might live. That's what the baby in the manger tells us about God. What he is willing to give of himself in order to bring us back to himself, in order to give us a quality of life which will find its fulfillment in service. I wonder if we fully grasp that sign, friends. When we become all sentimental and bubbly, when we look at the the baby in the manger, do we realise that a response is called for in this moment to serve as he would serve? 
Think about the, the shepherds again. They saw the sign. And I'm not saying that they understood everything immediately. But their response was to go and spread the word. To tell everyone what they had experienced that night and the significance of this baby. That's the response that we are called for in this Christmas season. It's always a, an opportunity for us to, to ponder more deeply the sign. But it's not just about understanding. It's not just even about experiencing. It's about commitment. What do we do now in service to the servant king? Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you that even in the darkest days of your people's history, there were men and women who were open to your word, whose inner lives thrilled with the hope of your promises, who lived in anticipation of your kingdom coming on the earth. We thank you that this faith was never extinguished and received its fulfillment in the coming of Jesus. We thank you that still you have a people who have heard his story, who have responded to his love, and live to show his kingdom in every society where they are found. We thank you that we are in this company and pray that by your grace we will be faithful witnesses where we are. We pray for your people throughout the world and ask that they may emerge from this season with minds renewed and souls refreshed. We pray for the world in its need, where lives are brutalised by hunger, disease, homelessness and injustice, and ask for change. We pray for our own nation, where with all our wisdom and expertise, we now know our limitations and fragility, and ask for greater self-awareness. We pray for those whose Christmas was marked by loneliness, illness, bereavement and ask that your spirit will draw near to strengthen and to renew hope. We ask all this in the name of Jesus our Lord and hear us now as we say his prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We sing together, look to the skies. There's a celebration.
Now may you go in peace and may the hope of the season live within your hearts now and forevermore. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Well, folks, before we go this Sunday, two wee boys have wandered into the church. This is Busby and this is Roddy. And they want to wish you a very happy Christmas. Okay, guys? Yes. Well, what have you got to say? One, One two, two, three. three. Happy, happy Christmas! Christmas. <laughs> well folks before we, we go here are two little boys my grandsons Busby and Roddy and they want to wish you a happy and noisy <laughs> Christmas so after three boys one, two, three happy, happy Christmas <laughs>